Good afternoon, and thank you for joining Oasis Solutions Sage 100 Sage 100 Cloud Webinar. And today we're going to focus on backups, hardware, and antivirus. Um, a couple of housekeeping tips in the very beginning. Um, everyone's phone line is muted during the presentation. However, I do encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. So there should be a question feature um, on, on your screen with your, uh, through your GoToWebinar link. And feel free to type in questions. I will address as many of those as I can during our allotted time. Um, if for any reason we have more questions than allotted time, I will follow up with you after the presentation. So again, um, please do not hesitate to, um, to ask any questions that you might have. So um, as an introduction, uh, my name is Pam Scott. I've been with Oasis Solutions for 23 years. I'm the Director of Client Services, and uh, probably most of you that are on the call that are existing clients have worked with me at some point or another. So I do want to welcome everyone, and I hope you enjoy today's presentation. The presentation today is going to be just a little bit different than normal. We're actually going to go through a PowerPoint presentation and uh, talk about some very important um, information that, that you need to know about, especially regarding backups. Closer to the end of the presentation, then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into SAGE 100 and I'm going to show you the different areas within SAGE where you may have a path set to store documents and um, you want to make sure that you're backing up those areas as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So the, you know, the main reason we started doing this webinar, and we do it once or twice a year, is that we are seeing more and more clients um, getting viruses on their system, being hacked, um, and the main culprit that causes, uh, from our experience, the biggest headache is the ransomware. So it's where you're getting a virus, it actually goes in and starts locking files in your Sage or other programs. And in order to get those files unlocked, um, they want a substantial amount of money. Now, we have uh, had a couple of clients that have chosen to pay the ransom. Um, in one instance that I can think of from a couple of years ago, even paying the ransom and getting those files, quote, unlocked, they were still missing files. So they had to um, actually spend a lot of money with us as well to try to piece things together. I do see that there is a question or someone had raised their hand. I'm not sure. Uh, someone had raised their hand, so if you do have a question, please go ahead and type it into the question area. And I'm assuming that everyone can hear me. Um, if someone would just respond in the question box um, that you can hear me, that would be great. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of the main reason that we want to, to start talking about this is we see this unfortunate incident more and more, and when we see this situation happen with our client base, I'm going to say at a minimum of 75% of the time, clients um, determine that, um, thank you for letting me know that you can hear me, um, clients um, think they have a good backup, and then when they go to restore, it's determined that they do not have a good backup. Um, it could be for a variety of reasons, um, and we'll kind of talk about some of those, those reasons why that may happen, but more often than not, clients call us because they've had a situation. We'll ask them, when was the last time you got a backup? And they'll say, well, we're talking to our IT people, and it might be something that was backed up a week ago. It might be a month ago. And we've had some that says, well, we doesn't look like we've done a backup for a year. So that can be devastating to a business 
to lose all of your financial information. So, um, so what we're going to talk about today is that um, when you're doing backups of your backup process, is that all of the files and folders that live below the MAS90 folder. So when, when Sage is installed, it still creates a MAS90 folder, which is the old name of the software. But even if you're on Sage 100, Sage 100 Cloud, it typically has a MAS90 folder embedded in there in the install. And everything within that MAS90 folder should be backed up. And it should be backed up on a regular basis. In regular basis, in, in our definition, means on a nightly basis that you are backing up your system. We do not recommend that you do incremental backups. And what an incremental backup is, um, is that the backup goes out and looks at files that were changed that day, and it does a backup of those files. So um, doing incremental backups, if you have to do a full restore, um, let's say that you do full backups on a weekly basis. Every Friday night you do a full backup. Um, on Thursday night you did an incremental backup and then you were hit with that ransomware. When we have to do that restore the following day, we're probably not going to be able to use the backup from Thursday night. We're probably going to have to go all the way back to last Friday, which means you're going to have to rekey a whole week's worth of work. So uh, please do not do incremental backups. It, it just, it, most of the time, you're still going to end up having to rekey much more data than you would assume that or want to do. Um, so again, I'm just talking about doing my, uh, nightly backups, and also do not assume that your backup system is working. Um, in the situations that we have where we find out where clients determine they do not have a good backup, a lot of times it's that, that their backup system isn't working. Well, you know, it runs every night. We assume it's working. Um, well, Joe used to do that, but he doesn't work here anymore, but I think Sally took that, you know, took that responsibility. Never just assume that your backup is working. So in addition to that MAS90 folder, there are other data files stored in other locations, and you need to make sure you're backing those up as well. So other locations, and this is what I'm going to go into Sage in just a little bit and actually physically show you what modules to go into, what screens to go in to look to, to gather that information. So other locations could be maybe where you're, you're storing your uh, paperless office PDFs. Now, um, some people may just allow those PDFs to be saved within their Sage folder. Um, but let's say that you do payroll and you want to make sure that any of your payroll um, journals and registers or copies of those direct deposit stubs are saved in a more um, in a safer more secure location maybe on your C drive or maybe somewhere else on a server or a different server so you want to make sure that you're going to take a look at that also company data can be designated to be stored in different in, in alternate directories so you may have your Sage 100 installed on the D drive on the server, but your data files are actually on the G drive. So we're going to look and see how to determine that. Now, alternate directories are only applicable if you're using the standard version of Sage, which is the old MAS90, or the advanced, which is the old MAS200. If you're running the premium version or SQL version, um, there are not alternate directories in that particular product. Um, so, so most of that company data, if you're on the premium version, the company data is stored in the Microsoft um, SQL database. So again, we want to make sure we're backing up all the directories. And the two that I've mentioned here are not the only two, but we will get into, we'll drill down into more detail regarding that. 
So um, the final line of the defense is a strategy for restoration. So we don't recommend that you wait until you have a crisis to determine what that restoration strategy is. We um, encourage you to work with your IT folks now at this point and develop what is that strategy. You know, how are you doing our backups? Is it is it something physical that's on site? Um, are we backing up to the cloud? Um, what's happening there? How how is that happening? Um, we recommend that you have a rolling day, uh, rolling seven days of full backups. Now, realistically, it's probably going to be five days because you're going to do your backups Monday night through Friday night. Um, but some companies um, are open and functioning seven days a week. So um, if you are doing data entry and working actively in your Sage or any other programs for that matter, you should be backing up every night that um, would be applicable. Everyone, for a, from a SAGE standpoint, everybody needs to be logged out of SAGE. Um, if, you, if your backup starts at 10 o'clock at night, but somebody's in there doing some work in the GL, getting financial statements ready for a board meeting the next day, um, those GL files may be locked. So when you do the backup, it's not going to copy those because they're in use. Um, and then here is um, another kind of reminder of things that aren't always in that Mass90 directory. We talked about paperless office. If you use BizNet, um, that is not within your Mass90 folder, so you definitely want to make sure you're backing up your BizNet. If you use Sage Fixed Assets, Sage CRM, Sage HRMS, any other uh, products or external databases that you may be using in conjunction with your SAGE, you want to make sure you're backing those up as well. Um, so again, to reiterate, you should make no assumptions about the viability of your backup. Um, you need a restoration plan, and then you need to test out that restoration plan. So working with your IT, whether they're external or internal, um, you need to determine, you know, can I, if I, if I had a situation today, can I fully restore my Sage 100? Are the files that are being backed up, you know, are they usable? If it's an incremental backup, what would happen if, um, if I hadn't had a full backup for a month? You know, how much work am I going to lose? Um, you know, how long is it going to take you to recover? Um, because your system is basically going to be down. Um, you know, I'm going to say if you have the perfect plan in place, your your business uh, from the from the Sage 100 standpoint is probably going to be down for at least a day or two. Now, if you're a a very small company and don't have a lot of data, it may not. Um, be that much of a downtime, but I'm going to say on average, um, if clients have all of their ducks in a row, you're you're going to be down at least one day, and and possibly two. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I do know that um, if you're backing up in the cloud, depending on what service you're using, that it can possibly take a few days longer to um, to be able to retrieve that information from the cloud in order to do a restore. So um, what I would suggest that you do, especially if you're outsourcing your, your backups. So if, you're, if your IT folks are managing it offsite, it's in the cloud, one of the questions you need to ask them, should we need to restore, how much downtime are we going to have? Um, so again, have a restoration plan and then test it. You know, don't just say, yes, we've got a plan and here, here it is. You really should go through that process. You know, plan a time where you can be down for a little bit and actually go through that process of restoring and making sure that everything really does work the way that you, it's supposed to work. So, um, 
a lot of times uh, clients w are struggle with, you know, managing that daily process if they do it in-house. You know, uh, we they may use some type of a, a tape drive or an external drive where they're switching them out every day and somebody, you know, takes it home. And it just kind of gets to be a hassle. Maybe your business has grown to the point where doing that backup is just taking too long. You know, if you start the backup at midnight every night, it's not finished by the time you're, you come in the next morning at 8 o'clock. That can happen. So um, what some of our clients choose to do is completely outsource everything. So they actually have someone host their Sage software which means the um, the server is off-site. It is, is either owned by you or you're kind of renting that server, for lack of a better term. And then they are responsible for, um, for the backups. Uh, a lot of these hosting servers um, have like a, a mirror image so that it's almost real time that when you when you're updating something, it is updating it to another server as well, so that if one server fails, they can restore you very quickly and get you back up to where you were. Um, so that is also an option. It also um, eliminates having to have um, an IT person on staff or maybe multiple IT folks on staff to, to manage your servers. Um, it also eliminates having to call your local IT provider um, when you do have a situation. We're not um, suggesting in any way that you shouldn't work with a local IT provider or that you should not um, manage it in-house if that's what you choose to do. This is just an additional option. And, and like I said, some folks are, are deciding to go this route. But it's, it's tri strictly up to you, and, you know, you need to do a cost analysis and, and look at your return on investment if you're wanting to do something like that. So, um, so talking about hosting, um, for Sage 100 and Sage 100 Cloud, whoops, let me go back a second. Um, you know, hosting may be the answer. Uh, we do have a technology partner um, that does hosting for several of our clients, and it is called, they are called Trap Technologies. Um, if anyone is interested after this presentation uh, for information regarding Trap, please let me know, and we'll be glad to send you some information um, and, you know, put you in touch with them, provide pricing on, on the hosting. Now, one of the things that I feel like I need to clarify a little bit um, is you'll notice up here where it says you're hosting Sage 100 and Sage 100 Cloud. I think most of our end users know this by now, but Sage Software has changed the name of the product to Sage 100 Cloud. However, it is not a true cloud product. So Sage 100 Cloud is still installed somewhere, either on your server, just like your Sage 100 is, um, if you're hosting through Trap Technologies or uh, Peak 10 or some other service, you're still physically installing Sage software um, to a server. It is not a true cloud product. The Sage 100 Cloud name indicates that there are some cloud components. Uh, probably the one that is most familiar um, this, that has been included in the product for a few years is Atrix, which is um, what you use now to print your 1099s and your W-2 forms. And also, if you're wanting to do e-filing, um, that is a, a third-party service um, that is used in conjunction with your Sage that is accessed via the internet. So that's kind of a an example of what the the cloud components are of Sage. Um, so if you say, well, I'm running Sage 100 Cloud, do I need to back up? The answer to that is absolutely yes. 
So if anybody has any questions about that, I'll be glad to answer those. Um, I'll also open it up uh, for just a moment to see if anyone has any questions about anything that we've talked about so far. Um, I know I've gone through it kind of fast, but if there is anything else, um, just let me know. And I will be glad to answer those, those questions. Um, so talking about antivirus software, um, everybody obviously wants to use antivirus. Um, there's tons and tons of different products out there that can be used um, on your system. And we do not recommend one antivirus um, product over another. Um, but what we do want to talk about and make you aware of is that um, antivirus software can cause some performance issues within SAGE. And um, you may, all of a sudden you may notice, gosh, our SAGE is really slow. You know, used to it would take me, um, you know, five minutes to go through all of my updates of an AP check register, and now it seems to be taking 10 minutes or longer. Um, you know, nothing's changed. It's still my same workstation. You know, we're not aware that anything has happened, but it just seems to be slowing down. Um, sometimes you may get a message that um, you go in to, to process something and it'll say such and such file not found. And you're thinking, well, you know, that file's been there forever. Why is it not found today? Antivirus can possibly cause that issue, antivirus software. So um, if you have an issue with your system starting to run slow and you call our help desk, that's one of the first things that we're going to talk about. Um, typically, antivirus is installed at the workstation level. And it's also installed at the server level. So depending on the, the product that you're using, let's say that you're going into vendor maintenance. Every time you go to open a file, that antivirus software may be scanning it, making sure there's not a problem with it. So you can see how that can slow it, the system down. So what we will do is we will um, make some recommendations for um, excluding some file extensions from being scanned. So it doesn't mean you're turning off your antivirus. Um, it's literally turning off the scanning of certain file extensions. And most of these filing extensions, not all of them, but a good portion of them are all proprietary to Sage 100 and Sage 100 Cloud. So you're not putting your, your system at a huge risk by putting those extensions or exclusions on the antivirus. If you're running antivirus software and you are having no slowdown issues, then we would not recommend making, making those, um, those ex exclusions, excuse me. So, if you do need to do this, and we would provide you information, our, the help, del, help Desk Consultant would send you the documentation with all of these file extensions. You don't need to write them down unless you just want to. Um, but basically, these are the file extensions that we would recommend that you exclude from the scan. And we would have you do this at every workstation that uses Sage 100 as well as the server where Sage is installed. So we don't run into this issue as much as we used to, um, but if your IT folks you know, do an update or you get a new server and they're adding a lot of new things and they want to um, you know, get a new antivirus software, then you may start seeing some slowdown. So I just want you to be aware of that and have that in the back of your mind that if you do run into a latency issue, that that could be the problem. It's not always the, the issue, and this is not always the resolution, um, but it is many times. So I'm going to open up and see if anyone has any questions about antivirus at the moment. 
Um, this is just kind of going into a, a lot of information that we won't talk about because I've kind of given you the summary of, of the information, but um, it's kind of just giving you more detail from SAGE regarding the um, what we just talked about. And actually this statement that is listed here, um, you know, it has uh, file extensions listed, but we will provide you with many more. But um, most of you are probably familiar with the SAGE 100 supported platform matrix, um, especially anytime you're getting a new server or if you've requested an upgrade, we send you that document. And it talks about the, um, the minimum requirements for your version regarding your operating system, your workstations, and your server. There are um, sections on that SPM or supported platform matrix that actually talk about antivirus. So any questions about that? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to Sage. And I'm going to go through and show you some of the areas where you can find um, paths that have been set. So you're telling Sage, this is where I want you to save this data. So again, you're, you're wanting to look and see if anything is outside of that MASS90 folder so that you can make sure that you are backing that up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the library master module under main and we're going to go into company maintenance. And I'm going to just pull up the first company listed. And you need to look at every company you have set up in SAGE, whether it's a historical payroll company, it's a company that went out of business 10 years ago and you've not done any transactions. You need to look at every company. So you're going to select the company code and then you're going to go to preferences. And then you're going to look at data location. And this is telling you where the data is stored. And so you'll see right here where it defaults to that MASS90 folder. And also you have the ability to save your payroll data to a different location to make it a little more secure. So this is where it's saying that my company ABC, this is where the data is stored. And this, this folder called MAS underscore ABC, this is all of my ABC data for each module um, with the exceptions of what we're going to look at that uh, the modules on the left. So to scroll through this, I'm going to leave it on the preferences tab and then I can just use my arrow and go to the next record and I can just scroll through these and see if I see any um, anomalies and just make sure that those files are being backed up. The next thing that you want to look at is um, paperless office. So if you are actively using paperless, you want to know where those documents are being stored. So if you go into the um, setup and um, under paperless options, this tells you which of the options below here that you are saying, yes, I want to use. So sometimes I'll see people um, just want to keep their journals and registers and they don't keep anything else in, in uh, PDF form. But this is where your setup options are. And then below that, each of these maintenance screens um, is where you've set up uh, how you're managing the journal and register PDFs. So I'm going to open that screen. And I can take a look and do a lookup. You may see this separated out by companies or separated out by module. This, I have it set up for everything in all modules. But when I take a look at this, you're going to notice that this is a different directory. So should I have to restore my Sage 100, you know, I want to make sure that I'm restoring this directory as well. So I would need a backup of it. Um, I also, so then I'm going to, that was the only option there that was set up. So in report maintenance, 
I'm going to take a look at my flashlight. It doesn't look like we have anything really set up here. So um, I'm not really tracking this, but if I pulled this up and wanted to set up a ABC distribution, then you also can see where that path is. Another way to do this, let's say that you have 30 different companies in Sage and you store things all over the place and you don't really have time to go through company by company and take a look at it through the, the flashlight. You can also go down to the printer icon and then I'm going to click preview for today's purposes. Um, but you can print out that listing and if you have multiple companies set up and it's storing various documents in different places, then all of that is going to print out and you can have that as a reference as well. Um, so this, each of these you need to be taking a look at from the paperless office standpoint. So any questions about either of those at this point? Okay. If you do, please chime in with your question and I'll be glad to take a look at it. Um, in Accounts Payable, if uh, we're going to go to the setup and we're going to go to AP Options, if you are paying your vendors electronically through the ACH feature, um, you're going to go into your AP Options, you're going to go to ACH, and this is going to show the path of where you're saving those ACH files. So that's something that you may not want to lose, so you want to keep track of that. By the same token, if you do direct deposit um, through um, Sage 100's payroll, you're going to go into your payroll setup and then payroll options. You're going to go to, that's fine. No. And is it going to pop up for me? Let me try that again. There we go. So you're going to go, I was just impatient. So you're going to go to your direct deposit tab under your payroll options. And then if you're doing direct deposit, whoops, sorry, I popped it up twice. If you're doing direct deposit, once you save this, it's actually, uh, it's not showing on this particular screen because I don't have anything set up. It's going to have a pass down here uh, very similar to what you saw in the um, accounts payable. Let me go to my ABC company for just a second. And we'll take a look in there and see if I can give you a better example. Okay. So this is one that's been set up properly. Um, so it shows you the path for the direct deposit. So again, a lot of individuals do not keep that on within their Mass90 folder where that anyone can just browse out onto the server and possibly find that information. So you do want to check that. Um, another area where you may um, have files stored at various locations would actually be in your inventory. Um, if you have um, pictures associated with your inventory items, you want to make sure that you're getting a backup of that. So that may be an area within inventory management. Um, another area is um, Visual Integrator. So in, um, in Visual Integrator, you also, um, when you have import jobs, you are uh, typically have, let me see if I can find a job here. I'm just going to grab a generic screen. And try this again. Grab a table. And within that import job maintenance, when it pops up, um, yes, you actually have where you can have it set to where that import file is. 
so it's browsing out to that file that you're going to be importing. And you would have the same thing as well if you're setting up exports. Um, so we've talked about inventory management, um, the, um, the item um, links to uh, photographs or files. Also, if you use the memo feature um, in any of the modules, and uh, there are memos in a lot of areas within SAGE. I'll just grab the one for vendor maintenance. And I have on this ugly color just to for other purposes. So I'm going to just grab a vendor. And they have an existing memo. I can tell because this little icon is in yellow instead of uh, kind of plain white. But anytime you have a memo, I'm going to grab this W9 form, you can actually put an attachment. So this would be a good example. Um, if you keep copies of the w, W9 forms of your vendors um, and you've attached it here, then you would want to, um, certainly wouldn't want to lose those should you have some type of a, you know, have to restore. So you want to take a look at where you're storing those, those particular attachments. And they could be in lots of different places, so you really have to go in and take a look at that. And then I would actually suggest having some type of a formal written policy and procedure that um, there's some conti continuity to where you save those documents. And if you have a new employee coming in, that they understand that this is, you know, the path that things need to be saved. Um, so that would be another area is within memo maintenance. Um, in the the barcode module, um, you can can also set up paths in that. We don't have a lot of people that use barcodes barcode module, um, but you do have that. Um, and just to kind of reiterate, you know, if you use BizNet, which a tremendous amount of our clients use BizNet, you want to make sure that you're getting a backup of that as well. That's going to be outside of that Mass90 folder. If you're using Sage Fixed Assets, Sage CRM, uh, Sage 100 Alerts or Knowledge Sync, um, any third-party products that you're using in conjunction, uh, let's, uh, you know, Sage HRMS, Insperity Time and Attendance, any of those things, you need to make sure that you're getting good backups of those, that you're getting full backups. Um, other softwares, um, you know, you could check with them to see if incremental backups are okay. Um, some software um, has built-in backups where you tell it where you want it to back up and it, and it has, you know, kind of a, an automatic backup system built into that. Sage 100 does not have that functionality, so it's something that you have to manage um, on your own. And then the other thing is, um, I've had situations where clients will say something, you know, when I'll, when I'll ask, do you get a backup? Because that's a typical question when I do a pre-upgrade analysis. You know, are you doing backups? Because we do not want to perform an upgrade unless you have a good backup. And sometimes people will say, well, you know, we just copy Sage every night um, to, to a laptop we have in the office. And, and we do it that way manually. Or um, we have two servers. And every night it's set to make a copy of Mass90 and put it on the other server. If that is your only form of backup, ask yourself what happens if you have a fire and both of those servers are destroyed or you have a water pipe break upstairs and, and soak the server room. So, so your backups really need to be stored off-site whether somebody's physically taking something home, um, that off-site is a service that your IT professional provides where they're backing up your system and keeping a copy at their location, or um, you're backing up to the cloud or you have a hosted service. If, if, if all of your backups are still in your office, you know, with a ransomware situation, you're probably gonna be okay. 
But if you have a fire, a tornado, any kind of natural disaster, something of that nature, then your backup is still not going to be viable. So um, I know it sounds like we're kind of kind of preaching to you about that, but if you ever have the situation happen once, it really kind of brings it home on how important it is. And I have seen clients, unfortunately, over the past several years, um, individual clients spend tens of thousands of dollars either trying to get things pieced back together so they can maintain their business or paying a huge amount of money um, in ransom with no guarantee that when you get those files back that you're going to, number one, get all of the files back or that they're not going to have some type of corruption. So talk with your IT folks. Um, don't don't assume that it's being taken care of. Uh, you know, if they tell you it's taken care of, don't worry about it. Let them know that you'd like some type of a restoration plan and that you want some at some point to actually test and put that, you know, put that put that in motion to make sure that it does work. So I'm going to open it up now and see if there are any um, other questions. If you do have questions, please um, go ahead and submit those, and I will be glad to to answer any of those questions that I can. Um, and if no one else has any questions, then I will um, go ahead and end the session for today. So thank you everyone for attending, and I appreciate your time. Um, our webinar in November is going to start talking about, um, you know, kind of preparing for year end and uh, period end and year end processing as far as the order to close your modules and, and prepping for it. And then in December, we will be having two, um, two webinars on payroll year end and we will be having two webinars on accounts payable year end. Um, and for those of you that have worked with us for a while, um, we will still go through the same process of sending out year-end information in November, um, scheduling appointments for assistance, so that process will not be changing for us. Um, it's a little hard to believe that year-end is right around the corner, but it is. So uh, please join us for those webinars, and I'm not seeing any additional questions, so I'm going to go ahead and end the um, session for today, and I would like to thank everyone again. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.